guys, I'm Olivia. I've been tutoring the SAT English for about five years, and I'm gonna give you some tips to help you improve your scores for the next test. So when tackling the reading portion of the test, I really suggest you read the entire passage first. The first question you're gonna face is probably gonna be a main idea question, so it's really good that you get the entire context before you tackle the questions. If you're pressed for time and on a dense passage, I really recommend you skim it by picking up the adjectives and the verbs as quickly as you can. That's gonna give you a really good sense of tone, it's gonna give you a sense of the author's intention, and you're gonna pick up some of the vocab as you go as well. When you come across questions on the reading test with answers including words like always, never, or only, it's very likely not going to be the correct answer. The test usually doesn't have answers that are absolutes. But it's important for me to note there's an exception for every rule, so be sure to double check in the passage. When there's a question that asks for evidence from the passage, the best evidence for this is lines blah to blah. I recommend you do the question above first, narrow it down to two at least, then go find the evidence in the passage. When it comes to the double passage, read the first passage and do the first four or five questions that have to do with the first passage, then go back to the second one and do those questions. Now let's talk about the writing section. The biggest mistake I see my students making has to do with punctuation. Knowing the difference between a semicolon, a colon, when to use periods and commas. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is that whatever comes before a colon must be a complete sentence. You can essentially take a colon out and put a period there and it still works. What comes after that colon is either going to be a list or some sort of defining information from the statement before. A semicolon can sometimes be a little more confusing. It lives somewhere between a period and a comma. We use a semicolon when it is the same subject, but additional information. For example, we can go to the museum to do some research. Mondays are pretty quiet there. You can put a semicolon right in between those two statements. It also takes the place of a conjunctive adverb. Another common mistake on the grammar portion of the SAT is just knowing your pronouns. Knowing what we're talking about, what we're referring back to, is it singular or is it plural? Should it be it or should it be they? Really pay attention to how that sentence starts and what we're talking about. Subject verb agreement is another big mistake people make on this test. Just know whether your subject is singular or plural and that will help you decide if your verb should be singular or plural as well. All right guys, those are my tips for improving your score on the reading and grammar portion of the SAT. I've worked with tons of kids and they've all utilized these tips and their scores always go up. So just take your time, relax, read carefully, and good luck on the SAT.